Hey everybody, Coach BK here. So, video on gut health basics in um, how it's relating to hormonal health, just general health. Um, we throw out the term a lot, gut health, but I want to lay down some foundation pieces so you kind of get an idea of how much gut health interacts with everything else. It's it's just um, is off the chain. So anyway. Here we go. Um, we start out with the first statement that says that um, we can only be as healthy as the food that we can digest. So that means a little bit more than just um, the food that you're putting in your mouth. Digestion means that you're actually utilizing it, absorbing it. It's the same conversation that we have with hydration. Hydration doesn't equal just drinking water. Hydration means utilizing the water. So, um, hey Karen. So absorbing your food, eating your food, it means not just eating it, it means absorbing it in the belly. And this is why we started out this first um, bit with constipation, your poop matters. Your poop's going to tell you kind of, it's very cut and dry on how those are. So um, it gets kind of complex, but we're trying to keep it low key, um, you know, kind of layman's term, the idiot's guide to gut health. Here we go. Um, so the endocrine system, hormones, your immune system, not getting sick, um, your nervous system, highly, high, I can't stress this enough, highly integrated with your gut health. Um, they're saying that your gut actually has more nerve endings than your brain does, okay? Your second gut, it, um, the, the gut's long. <laughs> There's a lot of neurotransmitters, um, aka being angry or being happy, that um, are produced in the gut. So it's just very complex that we need to understand ourselves as a whole. You know, it's not just brain, nervous system. Um, your nervous system is throughout the entire body, just as, um, as an example, really um, nut nutshell. So, um, they have these fancy words called the gut-brain axis. Um, so the brain and the gut are dealing with motility, secretion, um, nutrient delivery, microbial balance, all of these fun words that I'm reading off. I took notes. Um, I am not like a PhD person in gut health. Um, it all makes sense. Motility, um, firing of muscles, motility in the long ex expanse of your gut. Um, your brain and those two work together to accomplish that. So if we're constipated, our mobility is low, food moves through the intestines slower, so it kind of like becomes more sludgy. So think about an apple. You put an apple in your mouth, you start chewing it, it starts digesting here, everything starts going through. An apple is fun in that um, it ferment, ferments quickly. So sometimes people that um, have kind of gut digestive um, imbalances will burp after an apple because the food is digesting um, as it's going through, creates gas, burps, bloating, farting, blah, 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 blah. So um, if the food isn't moving in the right speed through the gut, then we get more bloating, we get more gas. If it's moving too fast, IBS is an issue. Um, it's a big issue, partly because if the food is moving too fast through the intestines, um, you don't absorb your nutrients well, et cetera, et cetera. Or on the flip side, if we're constipated, stuff stays in the bowels too long in the places that it doesn't need to be in. It ferments, it rots, it does this stuff. We might have inflammation going on, leaky gut, and then stuff goes back into the body through that barrier of the intestines. So this motility, the secretion that's going on, nutrient delivery, just all of this stuff is very complex, um, but we can make it a little bit simpler, just kind of giving you some ideas. Um, this HPA access, this is where your endocrine system kind of interacts with your gut, um, in that the HPA axis starts in your head, so these are kind of a hormone talk. Your hypothalamus in your head, it's a gland that um, produces a hormone, and then it stimulates another gland in your head to produce another hormone, the pituitary, and then that interacts with your adrenals. 
um, to do things, produces cortisol and stuff like that. And cortisol shouldn't be labeled a bad hormone. It's needed. It wakes you up in the morning or you drink lots of coffee because it doesn't. Okay. HPA axis, that's where we get that name, the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis, those things going on. So you see how um, the hormone system is, is very broad as well. Um, <clears throat> and so the gut interaction with that hormonal balance um, affects can affect cortisol, just as one example. Cortisol is super important. Um, it's a stress hormone, yes, but we shouldn't call it a bad hormone. Cortisol wakes you up in the morning. It dissipates at night, so hopefully you go to sleep at night and you get sleepy and you go to bed. Um, so cortisol affects how the colon and the gut move, how things are absorbed. Um, just a quick example of if you're stressed throughout the day, your appetite goes down, your motility in your intestines go down, so everything kind of slows down with the presence of cortisol. Or if you're an endurance athlete and you're doing a, um, a hard race or a long race, appetite will go down, but you're still in need of absorbing nutrients. So how do we make it easy to get the things that we need because things are going to either be ramped up or be um, dampened down. Um, mucus in your gut is affected by cortisol, the microbiome, just all of this stuff. Stress wreaks havoc. If you're trying to run from the saber-toothed tiger, you don't need to be digesting your steak. That's what your body thinks um, because, you know, if you're dead, who cares what's in the gut? Anyway, so um, there's going to be an article and links below that are gonna cover a lot of this. I'm kind of nutshelling it for you just to give you some motivation on why this stuff really, really matters. Um, so the gut and the nervous system are super integrated as well. Um, like I said before, um, you know, there's a lot of nerve endings, a lot of um, neurotransmitters that go on in the gut in relation to the brain. And there, um, go into the article and read the article about how insulin, estrogen, testosterone, the thyroid, uterus, all of this stuff is just so fascinating. Super fascinating how the gut and um, say like insulin are um, interactive with each other. So it's saying a healthy GI tract helps the blood sugar management system. So blood sugar meaning when you're eating your food, producing glucose to do whatever. Um, that's how it works in a nutshell. You're either producing your glucose from um, protein, fats, etc., etc. Um, an unhealthy GI tract increases insulin insensitivity, meaning if you have, um, you're not as fat burning. Okay, so you're not doing the things with the insulin, insulin sensitivity, the receptors for insulin aren't working as great. Um, so your unhealthy GI tract is kind of inhibiting the insulin to work correctly. So what does this mean for an endurance athlete? Um, it can affect your ability to burn fat for fuel, okay? So your sugar cravings go up because your brain is hungry and you need glucose, so then you can't burn your fat as well for fuel. So then you crave the quicker carbs and stuff like that. So sometimes it's not a um, mind over matter. Sometimes it's actually a, oh, we need to kind of focus on maybe our gut health and improve our insulin sensitivity in order to burn more fat for fuel. That's kind of um, what the metabolic efficiency training does or eating more protein fats and balancing out the carbs does long term of helping you um, sharpen up the insulin sensitivity. That's kind of why the question in the health assessment, what's your fasting glucose number? I'm gonna teach you next month how to test that. It's, it's pretty simple. And you will have blood sugar reactions based on what you eat. And you can understand how that system is working based on how fast it goes down. It's not hard, it's just, um, you just need to know it. So I'm gonna write it down for you in an easy peasy. So that's just one example of how gut health and um, all of this kind of works together. So again, the article, um, this part one is gonna be available. 
So you can read more, the estrogen, testosterone, thyroid, um, chatter on endometriosis is also covered. So moving on to some um, specifics that you can do. So there's this whole gut healthy protocol and don't let it be overwhelming. Again, there's the order, um, there's an article, read it. You'll probably need to reread it. So implement a couple of these things and make sure that when you are doing these things that you give yourself rewards. If you go through a whole day without eating white bread and that's your nemesis, you need to reward yourself later on with, I don't know, eat a piece of chocolate. It has magnesium in it. Anyway, so the, um, the basics of the gut health protocol are as follows. Reduce inflammation, help to balance out good bacteria, and then to um, increase your digestive fire or your activity, okay? So what does that mean? Again, the article goes over six or seven steps on each of these things, but um, reducing inflammation means to, um, <laughs> reducing inflammation means to take out the crap, okay? Inflammation is, is horrible. There's a lot of articles on the team website on inflammation, just Google for it. Inflammation is terrible and it's probably the number one cause for all disease, inflammation. Um, it's eating the stuff that we don't deal well with. Wheat, dairy, soy, corn, and refined sugar are the biggest ones. Pharmaceuticals, alcohol, um, you know, drugs, prescription drugs, they're, in, they're inflammatory um, and whatnot. And so all of these inflammatory foods, inflammatory things, stress is inflammatory. Um, we stress out. We don't eat right, we don't eat, we starve ourselves, and then we drink alcohol, which is also inflammatory. Um, and then we end up with um, this inflammatory, you could think about it like sparks, okay? And think about your gut lining would be um, a little bit thinner than your skin, right? And so you're sending all these sparks against this thin lining that's supposed to be this barrier between you know, your sewage drainage in your body. <laughs> so what happens is, is you get leaky gut, the inflammation of the gut lining, it doesn't work right, yada, 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 yada. And then stuff goes wrong, sideways, stuff goes this way, stuff goes that way. Just think about, you know, your toilet to the outside world. And if you had a soaker hose or a leaky hose in your house, that's what it's like. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, reducing inflammation, and then there's some other things, very specific things to help with healing up the gut lining. And for endurance athletes, you are going to have problems with your gut lining because endurance, um, endurance activities will produce inflammatory compounds in the body. They do. They have to. It, you can't get around it. That is going to damage your gut lining. That is just what it is. Um, that's why I highly recommend to my athletes that they take L-glutamine, okay? But there's some caveats there, but L-glutamine is good for recovery, and it's the hands down the easiest way to help heal the gut lining. Um, drinking bone broth, we're gonna, there's an article on the team website on how to make bone broth. Um, it is really good because of the collagen and the gelatin um, from animal bones that helps to heal the gut lining. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, you need to do this different. Um, or take collagen um, pill. I'm, um, if you're vegan, you're not gonna do this. But um, take L-glutamine for sure if you're vegan or vegetarian. Um, this is one of the recommendations of having the collagen in the smoothies. Um, and then there's some other things too. So. Um, again, check out the article in the link. Turmeric, good stuff. Zinc, good stuff. Healing the gut lining, reducing inflammation. Um, moving on to this part two of balancing out good bacteria. If you don't know already, the reason why things get digested, how they get digested in the belly is bacteria. That's what breaks down stuff. It just doesn't happen magically. Okay, you can have good bacteria, you're gonna have bad bacteria. Um, 
And so like taking antibiotics kills bacteria and then there's a lot of things that introduces bad bacteria and then the bad bacteria takes over and then the bad bacteria actually robs you of nutrients. They have to eat. So they're gonna take your stuff, okay? Um, balancing good bacteria, one of the easiest ways of doing this is, um, you know, you can eat fermented foods. Um, there's some examples here, fermented foods, cheese, but just know that if your system's kind of on fire or you're that person that reacts to histamines, um, taking fermented foods is going to cause sneezing and, and reactions like that. Like um, some people the people that swim and then they get the snotty noses, you're really responding um, an allergy response. And so fermented foods might not be for you. There's a lot of other things though. Um, check the article out. You can take probiotics. There's recommendations in the articles, 50, 100, 10 to 50 billion CFUs per day, but start small because you can get gas, bloating, skin reactions if you just jump into the frying pan and do the 50 straight off. You got to give your gut time to realign, okay? Too much of one thing isn't necessarily, too much of something good isn't necessarily good in the beginning. You need to help this system to acclimate and to rebuild itself. Let the good bacteria build up and the bad bacteria go down. Taking digestive enzymes is really good. Um, we can talk more about that later. Um, I sell Juice Plus and Juice Plus has digestive enzymes in it, so that's another reason why it's super freaking awesome. Um, so I've been taking that stuff for years and years and years and years, like 15 years. Um, chew foods. Slow the heck down. There's a write-up on why. Starts the digestive process and it also helps um, a hormone and stuff react to what you're eating in order to have your appetite go down. Appetite isn't just a brain thing, it's a hormonal response for you needing gas, okay? Give, um, chewing your food, eating slower. <laughs> I am notorious for eating really fast on the go, so I, I really kind of violate this rule. Um, but it helps <laughs> helps to get the signals of when you're not hungry anymore. Um, adding fiber to your diet would be really good. Um, 30 to 45 grams a day, but again, you need to do it a little bit slower so you avoid the gas and the bloating and stuff like that. Um, another thing that we um, don't understand about is um, consuming resistant starch. So things like from legumes, um, lentils, chickpeas, potatoes that have been cooked and then cooled. So if you have a crock pot with some potatoes in it and then you eat them later out of the fridge, those have prebiotics in them that feed your probiotics. So you have prebiotics that are feeding your gut bacteria, which is super awesome. Potatoes are a good thing for you. The white ones and the sweet ones. Um, so that's building up good bacteria. Check out the article. Implement one or two of these things. Don't do all six at once. Or you're going to get bloated and gassy, and then people are going to be like, dude, you're farting too much. Stop. Um, okay, the third step, um, lighting digestive fires. So there's a disclaimer here that this is kind of an advanced step, um, understanding if you needed to add, you know, more stronger... Um, things in this area, you need to be cautious about this. So what is she talking about? Um, digestive fires means the digestive juices in your stomach, basically, okay, how well it's working. So reflux, burping, um, all that kind of stuff, um, having food that's in the poo that's not digested well, um, like, you know, corn that you didn't chew or bigger chunks of things can be hints of this. Reflux and burping, though, is that the digestive process isn't going well. Um, I get reflux after eating bread. I don't digest it well. I get reflux. So um, a sluggish digestive track in the morning, you're not getting up and going poop. And the very first thing in the morning means kind of that it's very sluggish in the morning. So there are some safe things to do to light your digestive fires. Okay. First thing to do is to drink hottish lemon juice. So all you do is um, make a warm, hot cup of water and add fresh lemon juice to it. 
drink it down. So the lemon juice is gonna stimulate acid production in the belly. Um, baby's colic, interestingly enough, a lot of colic in babies is because the pH in the belly isn't low enough. They don't have enough digestive juices, so things kind of back up and come up. Um, so this is why apple cider vinegar and lemon juice are stimulating. They add to the pH, meaning they lower it. Um, you have a sphincter in the bottom of the stomach that empties when it gets to a certain pH low. Um, so this is kind of why a lot of you have heard um, lemon juice is really good for stimulating digestive um, activity or working on um, reflux and stuff like that. Apple cider vinegar is hands down really good for addressing reflux. However, taking the fluid, liquid, is hard on the teeth. So um, and it, the acid gets on the teeth enamel. So there are apple cider vinegar pills. Boom, done. So if you struggle, if you're a guy that struggled with reflux for a long time, um, don't have enough digestive enzymes, you feel like your digestion is slower, um, doing lemon water in the morning or apple cider vinegar pills it can be a very safe and fun way to change that up. Uh, more advanced things, taking digestive bitters. Um, the article has a list of them. Milk thistle is on there. It's safe. It's also nurturing for the liver. So that's um, why the milk thistle is in the green smoothie that I recommend you guys take. Um, there's a lot of other things like dandelion um, is a digestive bitter. It helps improve digestion. You can drink that as a tea. Um, the next kind of last step, and this is where it's more advanced, you'd want to know what you're doing or work with somebody specifically, is to take um, HCL, hydrochloric acid, to um, really have a, a, a little bit bigger handle on <clears throat> making a change to your digestive enzymes. Um, the big, big, big caveat to that is um, do not do that if you're taking any anti-inflammatory anti medicines. Um, taking HCL on, and being on any anti-inflammatory medicine can be um, incre greatly increase bleeding and ulcers. So be um, in the know if you decide to do some of that. But all these other things that we're talking about are just general drinking bone broth, it's good stuff. Taking out dairy, good stuff. Reducing cheese, good stuff. Adding in collagen to um, your smoothies, easy peasy. Having L-glutamine in the house, I take it all the time. Um, turmeric, and there is gonna be some other things when we talk about blood sugar management a little bit closer. Dude, cinnamon and turmeric together are like a heck yeah combination. Increasing fiber is something we all need to be doing. Chewing your food, um, finding ways to get in probiotics. Um, prebiotics eat the cold potatoes so um, let me know if you have any questions on this this is kind of follow along and goes a, a long hand with your three-day food journal with what your pooping's looking like um, let me know if you have any questions hope you're having a great day